guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how to make this headboard, but we're going to be redoing it in white so we can show you step by step on how to make one of your own. I really like this headboard, I just want it in white so it kind of brightens up our bedroom. Our bedroom just doesn't get the greatest light so I think this will really just brighten up the space. So we will be showing you how to make this tufted headboard. Let's get started. <laughs> Headboard. So the supplies for this tutorial is pretty straightforward. We have two pieces of plywood here together. They are connected with two by threes that go the length of it and then two in the middle where the boards are attached to each other to reinforce that connection. Our headboard is made for a queen size bed. We just made it a tiny bit longer here on each side of the mattress so that it would be just a little bit bigger. Just make the bed look bigger and two pieces of plywood and then two by threes on the back here. And then we just screwed them in. So that is the back side and that would be what you need for the back. Here are more supplies that you will need. You're gonna need a tack hammer. It has a nice flat head so it's not gonna dent the tacks when you're hammering them in. You're gonna need these tacks from, well we got ours from Joann's but you can get them probably online or other craft stores. And we got gold. This is the fabric that we got. It's kind of a woven fabric that we got at Joann's. We got two strips. We had them cut it in three yards and it's 54 inches wide. So we will do two strips on the headboard. You're also going to need a fabric stapler and staples. These are both sold at Joann Fabrics. So this is something else that you'll need. So this is after we took off the old black fabric. This is what it looks like underneath. Go ahead, babe. Okay. So we have 5 8 inch uh, uh, higher grade plywood here, so it's not uh, going to come apart on you. And it's pretty nice wood, but uh, it lasts forever. This fabric, what we used underneath, we didn't use foam. We used batting, and which is much cheaper than foam. And we just doubled it up several times, went back and forth like five times. So you always want to over, make sure and overshoot uh, the material a little bit so it wraps around the edges and it gives you more of a fluffy edge as you're uh, going. But you could just use the same staples as you do for the fabric to tack this stuff to the board. Okay, so when you apply this you want to make sure and uh, staple it just to tack it on but anytime you staple something it'll make an indent and you don't want extra indents in here so just kind of do it as little as possible. But you can see here that we didn't staple anywhere on the bottom. I have a tack here in the middle, about, uh, but not on the last coat. The last coat we just left kind of free floating here, so, or the last time we wrapped it around. So once we had our batting just lightly hung up at the top <laughs> without making indents, we went ahead and used a pencil and marked out exactly where each tuft would be on the headboard. And you can kind of see it's tucked in from the old fabric. So you measure down from the top, and this one I used a sharpie just to, whatever pen actually works, but this one we had to use a sharpie. And you just measure down the same length here, several spots, do a little tick mark, and then you need a straight edge to go from one side to the other. So Alright, so when we measured down here, I pulled a measuring tape, and every five inches we did a line. So I measured down five, did a tick mark, tick mark each five inches basically. And then uh, did that in several spots, so measured five, so we had little dashes as we went along. And then um, the same thing across, basically, so every five inches, uh, five inches, five inches. But you actually, down on this next row, you want to do two and a half inches over, so that way it's right in the middle um, of the two. So five inches down, but two and a half over. But once you start that first one, then you can do five inches across uh, from each one. So once you've done that, you just carry it all the way down and all the way across. But uh, the key is to step back and look at it and see if you have kind of a skew or something like that to either side. Uh, so a couple of these, I actually have a little bit of a mark in between to make sure that I have it lined up and it looks good um, as well. So. Okay, so with each one of these holes, I kind of put my finger here and then I pull the fabric and kind of line up my finger with the, the hole and I kind of push it there and then see how the, the fabric might fold. So you'll have another uh, pinhole here and here basically roughly. Uh, so what we want to do is with this specific fabric we want to line up the, the stitching to make sure that it's nice and straight. 
So what we do is I basically take this, this straight edge, look at the stitching, kind of follow it along the edge, and make sure where my finger is the actual same stitching that goes vertically along there. So once I have that, which I do right now, I basically put my tack in here. I got my little special hammer here and we take it and there's two so far alright so the next one we want to find our mark here put our finger on it pull the fabric down put our finger in the same spot and then make sure our stitching lines up if you're doing vertical stripes or anything with uh, with a weave to it you'll want to do it this tediously but if you're just doing a normal pattern um, you can basically throw it up here and make sure you have enough access on the sides or extra um, on the sides and uh, then when you pull it tight and staple it you won't worry about uh, not having enough basically so uh, it's a little easier with the solid fabric because then you don't have to line up all these stitching but uh, this will create a cool little uh, contrast with all the different weaving and stuff that's going on. So. This is the weaving that he's talking about on this fabric. So if you get it crooked at all, it's going to be obvious. Your so this period. one, we have to be a little bit better about like lining up the tacks with the actual lining of the, the pattern of the fabric. So we have all of the tufts in place. Now we're going to cover the bottom with the second piece of fabric that we have. Um, we're also gonna staple the bottom here. Richard will show you what he's gonna do. staples and things like that so what we're going to do is staple across here and then we're going to drop it down so it actually hides that layer of staples right here as well as these layers that we're putting on now and just because we want the uh, the pattern of the weave uh, the material here we'll kind of staple along the line so when we fold it over it'll look nice and neat What we did is we put some towels just to keep it clean, nice clean towels on the floor and we flipped it over and put it over. So we wrap all the excess on the other side here. Excess. Excess. So we wrap all the extra material on this <laughs> side over here. Sorry, I can't say access. <laughs> access is like access to a party or something. Excess right. is extra. <laughs> this is a party, babe. We wrap all the extra over on the other side. And the key is on this side, we want to make sure it's pulled taut. And then with this particular material, we want to make sure the lines are pretty close to vertical. Just depends on how particular you are with that aspect. Uh, with us, we want to get it uh, visual is almost the best uh, tool to use is just visually look at it. And usually our eyes, eyes are pretty close actually. So just visually look at it and um, that to me looks pretty good and pretty close. So we take the, take this, make sure it's nice and taut, and uh, we basically kind of roll it up. 
and uh, don't get it too taut to where you stretch your fabric or make it look weird or wavy or anything like that. So loose enough where it's good, but uh, taut enough that it, it doesn't show a ton of wrinkles and stuff like that. So, so we get it close. That looks good. Grab my stapler and we just staple on the back side here. So the one thing is corners, you can really do it however you want because it's hidden, but uh, um, I always like to uh, kind of take them and fold them nicely. So what I'll do is I'll kind of take this extra material here and uh, fold it underneath and then fold it again because we're going to cut all this off at the end anyways. But you want to make sure it's nice and neat here. And of course we'll staple all the rest of this here soon once we get the base stapled. So that looks nice and neat. And the points where it's going to possibly start to fray and stuff is the corner, so you want to throw a couple extra staples, the staples there just in case. So as we go down the side, we want to make sure it's pulled taut. Look on the other side, everything looks good and nice and tight. It doesn't hurt to bring it a little bit away from your edge, that way you just have a little extra. On um, the last one I did, I actually did two rows of staples, one here and then one about three inches in. That way we had more than enough room uh, just in case. So I only want to staple down to about here and I'll leave the gap where I have this seam so I can make it look nice and clean there. Alright, so we've done a double layer of staples. I like to do that just in case it starts to pull or fray or something like that. Uh, but then we want to uh, start cutting basically, so um, we want to cut any excess. You could actually just tack this up back behind her and you would never know. Um, I like to cut it off just because it's easier to transport and move around and stuff. Um, I actually did the staples kind of thinking ahead um, as far as how I wanted to cut it. So I actually did the staples here um, already in the right spots. So we just start here and cut along the lines. We want to stay, you know, a half an inch or so away from the staples. We don't want to get so close that it's uh, starting to stretch it and stuff. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, this is all the hidden side. You can get as tedious as you want or as quick as you want. I did the staples every couple inches apart. But you can see we're just kind of going here. It will fray. And you could do it more frequently if you need to. We've already done a couple sides. You want to kind of over it, kill it on staples. That way it doesn't fray or bend or whatever. Uh, but on the side here, um, I already did the other side, but uh, this one here, uh, we just, we, you can see our foam underneath and it's kind of wrapped around the edge. You want to make sure that it still wraps around that a little bit. Um, what we learned when we did this last time is you don't want to pull it taut like that because then it looks weird and uh, the edges are really tight and um, straight and it looks weird because it's pillowy everywhere else and then tight on the edges. And you don't want to make sure you don't you want to make sure it's not too fluffy. So the the key here is kind of keeping it symmetrical, but not pulling it too tight. That's basically what I'm getting to. So you want to keep it here, and pull it somewhat tight, and leave it there, and then bring your staples in, and just start going. Uh, the other key is you don't want to like crease these and pull these so you have one big crease. Instead, you kind of uh, disperse the. The wrinkles a little bit everywhere so that when we and you pull it it won't on the other side it won't look uh, weird and folded on certain spots so a lot of times I take it around the back side I kind of fill it and let it up a little bit making sure that it's carrying through and level all the way across so we get that one tacked on there pretty well and it looks pretty good and you can look at the other side here and walk around there babe. see up there it looks pretty good all the way across you happy with that? Mm -hmm. We got the sign off from her, so that's pretty key. So that looks pretty good, and of course we left a little extra slack so you can kind of massage it with your fingers a little bit. The, the crucial part that we found was uh, doing a secondary row um, along these sides just to give it more durability. So I have this piece of wood here, I'm kind of using it as a, a guide. Just flip around my stapler here and uh, just start wherever you want. but. Uh, 
I just left it enough room away from the edge here so I could still run my scissors through there. And this one I like to do them a little bit more overkill, so about an inch, inch apart. To each his own. Everybody's a little different, but. Hi, Hoot. Hi, baby. My goodness, look at these monkeys swarming. Oti. So nice. <laughs> so hot. So pretty, babe. <laughs> Um, so uh, with a headboard this size, uh, you want to attach it permanently to the wall or at least temporarily, but so you can't pull it down or it get, won't get knocked off. So well, what I actually did was I used these uh, L brackets that I got from Home Depot and I found where the studs were and I actually mounted those uh, to the stud so they're nice and secure. And then um, the pattern that you guys saw on the piece of wood back here, I actually set it so it was equally in between these two brackets. So. What happens is the the two one the sorry the two by three actually will slide right in here beside it. Then we could put one screw right straight through here into the piece of wood, and that keeps it from falling forward or coming off. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It was fun and challenging at the same time with the crazy heat and the kids and the chaos, but I think it turned out pretty darn good. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.